so yeah, so jumping into our next talk, um, Matt's going to join us back um, and joined by co-host uh, Sarah from Protocol Labs as well. Um, and this is a really exciting talk. It's going to be talking about now uh, what is the early progress of people building on top of the FBM. So we're going to be joined by Lamont, by Ren, by Karen, by Nandit, and by Ilya, um, who are going to be uh, in a panel, so a really big panel, um, hosted by Sarah and Matt from PL, uh, about kind of the current state of building uh, on the FBM. Um, and I will let them take it away and make sure everybody's onboarded here. It's enough people that uh, off my screen. There we go. Folks like Simon, or Sarah and Matt are both here. So I'll let you guys take the lead. Thank you, Jacob. Um, yeah, once again, really nice to um, be here again with the ETH Global community. Um, my name is Sarah. Nice to meet you. If we haven't met before in the ecosystem somewhere, um, I am a developer advocate with the FPM team. Um, I also run the early builders program for FPM. And so that means like we have a whole host of people that came on when uh, we had plans, but things kept evolving and things are still evolving, but they were brave enough to join into the program and build and hack and fix together with us. And it, it started back in September and now we are about five months ahead now. Um, they've had a lot of maturity in their project. And so we wanted to feature some of these early builders um, today to kind of showcase what they've built so far, what their journey looks like. And so that could be you um, in a few months to come. So really looking forward to that. Um, before we get to introduce our panelists, um, Matt, do you just want to kind of say hi and say a few words? Uh, I will do. I don't need to say much. I don't think I was just on the on the, on the the last talk, uh, already talking quite a bit. But so on the last talk, JV and I talked about the kind of things you can build on the FEM. And I guess we're getting a lot more concrete now and talking to people who are building on the FEM um, already um, early in their pros get progress. But, you know, we get to hear from them as to uh, how they're actually getting on. So, yeah. Awesome. Okay, so we'll we'll do introductions. We kind of want to hear from all these early builders and uh, please introduce yourself and give us like an overview of what your project is about. Um, maybe we can start with Lamont. Hey, how's everybody doing? Uh, can you hear me okay? Sound great. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, so I am actually one of the developers on Jack Rabbit Finance. It's actually a decentralized exchange that we'll be launching on the FVM. Uh, so, you know, we're running a, a quite a few different features, but one of the main ones is uh, we also have, we plan on having a bond marketplace uh, utilizing on-chain storage bonds and tokenized debt um, in the uh, uh, more high level sense. And uh, yeah, you know, we're, for the most part, we, um, uh, our project is, uh, you know, is moving along, you know, pretty well. I guess we'll go more into that a little bit later on, but, uh, but yeah, so, you know, um, uh, we'll uh, have a number of different features uh, coming out to the FEM very soon. And we uh, started in the ETH Global Hackathon as well. That was just a couple of months ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember that. Uh, and then you joined the program and I was like so excited. Um, yeah, there are a few of you here as well that have come from the Hackathon. So the ETH Global community is, um, is, is a really great community to uh, work together with. Um, I totally forgot to sh also share all the logos of all the teams. So I'm going to share that up right now. I didn't want to do it while you were talking halfway, Lamont. Um, just to, this is so that everyone can kind of see um, all the different teams. And, you know, make sure you look out for all these um, exciting teams and their logos. And you'll, you'll know when you see it and definitely check them out along the way. Um, so we'll move on to the next introduction. Um, Karen, do you want to share and kind of say hi? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Karen. I'm the um, product lead of uh, Spandau. So we also started at um, the Hacker FM uh, Hackathon in mid-November, and then we joined the um, FAM Early Builders Program. So Spandau is a um, data DAO that allows consumers to monetize their credit card transaction data. Um, so there are three main problems that we're trying to tackle uh, with uh, our product. So the first one is all the centralized corp uh, centralized entities, corporate entities are extracting all the value from monetizing credit card transaction data, which is value, which is a um, a data market that's valued at more than one hundred billion dollars right now. And then the second one is uh, uh, that um, there is lack of ownership and governance concern. Uh, for consumers to uh, over their credit card, personal credit card transaction data, so the the data the the product that we're building is trying to address the need for formulating a 
um, positive strong network for uh, consumers and end users to uh, coordinate and pull their data together. Excited to be here. Thank you, Karen. Okay, Ilya, do you want to go next? Yep, I'm always ready. So I have this amazing t-shirt here. It's actually the t-shirt from the first uh, VVM hack uh, that was happening like a couple of months ago. Uh, so we are super excited uh, to participate this time uh, or with a stable test net. Uh, thanks to the guys, thanks to the team. I'm super excited, super thrilled. So uh, we are building market.xyz. It's a platform for metaverse builders where uh, creators can perpetually store, sell, buy, and gift any kind of 3D models and metaverse spaces. And we really see uh, Filecoin as the essential like foundation of the interoperable metaverse. And we see the metaverse as actually as the new 3D internet, like the new interface for, for to access the World Wide Web for, for the new generations. Um, so we are super excited to build on VVM because we have absolutely, like we have invented an absolutely unique feature. We call it uh, EFT, encrypted file token. So we have uh, modified an ERC721 in NFT and we have attached like a file coin storage to it. So we have invented an NFTs with hidden content. And for now, like we have been researching pretty deep and for now it's, it is only possible on, on VVM together with, with file coin. And we are super excited to be a part of this amazing community. And we really believe that the file coin team has, 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 has a unique concept and unique vision since like five years already, we can see that, but we also see that the community and, and the team is somehow different from many other projects. And we are super happy to be part of it. Awesome. Yes. Um, always feeling your super strong energy earlier. Um, love having you in the community as well. Um, all right, Nandit, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. So, hey everyone. I'm Nandit and at Lighthouse, uh, we are building perpetual storage on Finecoin that allows you the ability to pay once and store your funds like forever. And again, like talking to a lot of developers, we realize that our building on storage systems can be done better. Perpetual storage is the key component that we have built. And around that, we also have like our encryption SDK that can be used to store private data, build token gated applications and also like our gateways that can even be used to stream 4K videos. So, but yeah, overall, I'm quite excited to be uh, in this panel and uh, I've been in the file ecosystem from last two years. So great to see that now we are finally coming up with FVM. Yeah, um, Lighthouse, that Nanda, Lighthouse has been carrying the perpetual storage. Um, you know, area for FEVM. We, we definitely look forward to more uh, prep storage like use cases coming up. But yeah, thank you so much for all the contributions from Lighthouse. It's, it's been amazing. Uh, by, the, by the way, we have integrated Lighthouse, Lighthouse storage and it's super highly recommended for everyone, guys. Lighthouse storage is super cool and gonna can save you a lot of time. Yeah, I've actually included, um, so yeah, really awesome to see like projects adopting across the early builders cohort. We've also included that resource within the cheat sheet. So if you want to check out Lighthouse, um, it's in there as well. And yeah, if more teams come on different SDKs that can be used, this is what we'll be featuring um, within our community as well. Um, and then last but not least, uh, Ling Ren, do you want to go? Yeah, so my name is Ling, I'm the founder of Rev to Seal. So Project Shield involves uh, building the distributed computer over Faircon. So it's a market based on FNVM and also the local protocols. So it enables like a, let the users to be able to spend the cryptocurrencies and, and, and the rental computing instance from storage providers and uh, to access their silver data locally, like via the high speed local network. So uh, then people can run some like a com computation against the, the large amount of the, the data already in the in the Faircoin network. And uh, for example, the first use, use case will be the trained uh, deep learning models. So we already know like there are already like the pre-trained uh, models, like uh, either in the hardened tree or in the network. So people can run to uh, uh, like a computing inst instance and download the basic pre-trained models and uh, just to use their own data to point to it, Margot and see the, the, the results. So yeah, 
this is still uh, uh, very early and uh, just uh, stay tuned. Thank you so much, Ning. Um, okay, cool. So, like, uh, Project Shell is also one of um, the first projects that have come out of the cohort to focus on decentralized compute. I know there are a few teams that are working on it. Uh, Project Shell has a demo already running today. Uh, I think what we can do is uh, we have, well, we have a huge community on Slack, the PowerPoint Slack. So, if you want to get in touch with these teams or check out their demo, um, we will see you on our Phil Builders channel in the PowerPoint Slack. Um, yeah, a lot of conversation goes on there as well. Cool. So we'll get into some questions about your journey building out your projects um, from all of you. This is open to anyone to kind of share what they think. Um, and as well as Matt, like if you want to come in as well with some insights, because you've also watched this cohort, like we've both been watching this cohort uh, grow over time. Um, so the first question that I'll put out there is why did you choose to build on FEVM? That anyone can go. All right. Uh, I'm going to be the first one as always. I just can of hold myself, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, for us, um, like our goal was that um, we we were trying to attach this hidden content to, to the NFT. And um, at one point, we have realized that thanks to the FIVM, this is like the only network right now where we can build this in a truly decentralized way. Uh, right now, the our alpha version is uh, running on, on Polygon together with Filecoin, but there is also like a part of our centralized backend which like is playing some kind of an oracle, um, helping to 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 transfer like the encryption keys to to the to the new owner um, to decrypt the hidden content. And uh, as soon as Actor is going to be live on FVM, uh, we're going to put it because we have it on Rust. We're going to put it just on the uh, one of the smart actors of FVM. Uh, actors, that's the name for uh, Rust smart contracts on on FVM. Uh, so as soon as uh, we we gonna make it this like this our, our invention is gonna become like a completely decentralized standard and we are also planning on uh, making a Filecoin improvement proposal, uh, community proposal. So we we re we really see like th there is like somehow there is not enough of talking about that we need for the Web three like for 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 the for the, for the new uh, society for the justice in the new society for the new internet on the new web3 we need a decentralized storage as a foundation so filecoin is playing the role of http in the web3 and yeah i think we we all gotta spread the word more about that because it's amazing and cool yeah and then to to basically piggyback off of uh, what Ilya was saying um a lot of uh, pretty much my team's interest was very much exploratory. Um, we were very familiar with Filecoin before, um, have interacted either where, you know, data providers and some of us actually, uh, uh, for the most part, build products um, with Filecoin, uh, other dApps before. And the, you know, just the, just the idea of uh, being able to, to build smart contracts that you know, you can build on top of and, and use with the Filecoin network was, you know, it's kind of mind blowing for us. So, um, you know, and, and just go specifically with our own project, uh, you know, a lot of it is kind of exploring what different DeFi use cases now that we could really have for this, uh, you know, where we're researching derivatives and futures right now, you know, uh, on chain, um, on chain storage. And so, uh, yeah, you know, it's, um, it, it's, it, for the most part, we've interacted with Filecoin quite a bit, you know, before, but, uh, given the, the overall structure, it was kind of a no brainer, uh, for us in terms of Filecoin network and the chance to actually build something, you know, put smart contracts on it. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, like actually this is also the first time that we're hearing from our early builders on why they chose FBM. So this is also, uh, heartwarming to hear for us is like a compliment a session. No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate all the input there. Maybe I have like one more person share and then we'll move on to the next question. If anyone wants to go. Oh, I, I can my two it. So yeah, so thank you, uh, again, Sarah, of course, providing the resources and the, the wonderful SDK tools for it may make it easy to build like a, a smart contract to our FDM. So the, the project shield, so the project like the shield is actually unique to Coin. so it's uh, just uh, highly associated to the to the data, and uh, so uh, so with the FVM, it it just uh, enables the uh, the use case or the uh, capability that uh, 
uh, in the smart contract, we can just uh, access the manners, like the data, like uh, uh, the, the metadata and uh, verify with, uh, like which data set a uh, manner has or, or not easily just uh, expose the ground truth to the, like uh, the, the UI. So it's very wonderful. Thank you. Actually, I just like, just quickly one last idea. I, I saw one of like, of one research a couple of days ago where one guy was putting like, according to his vision, like the blockchains that have brought like the most value to the existing market and Filecoin was like, the first one was Bitcoin, then Ethereum, then the Filecoin, because all other ones, like they're pretty much are the copycats and we are like Filecoin team is delivering the real value to the existing market. So it's amazing. Yeah, th thanks so much, Ilya, and thanks, Ning, for sharing that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, we 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 look forward to you know more more people building. Like our ecosystem for Filecoin is is huge, um, and we also see people building up different options. So yeah, fully encouraging that, Matt. So yeah, I mean, this is great to hear why you started uh, building on part of the early builders program. Why you started building on on Filecoin and FEVM, but how was the developer experience? How has it been so far? You know, the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, we've got all the praise just now. You can be honest with us. Uh, um, how have, uh, how are things going uh, so far? Maybe uh, Karen, do you want to uh, kind of share how you how it's been? Sorry, on mute. Okay. Um, so I can share more about because I my my domain expertise is more in the in the, in on development of consumer facing um, applications in the web three space. So uh, for building consumer apps. Um, there's an analogy that you are basically putting together their um, legal pieces from all various different uh, solution protocols, uh, SDKs in the space, right? You put together a coherent solution that that uh, works for for any end users. So I think the the main challenge for early builders in the uh, on, uh, um, building on FM or uh, FEM is that um, because it's so still early. The uh, lots of sol existing solutions that are uh, compatible with other EVM chains are not supported on uh, uh, FM yet. I think this is the main main challenge. So I think this is something that lots of um, hackers experienced in the um, in the first hack in the previous hackathon in in November, and lots of people are facing in the um, Foundry co cohort. But I am pretty I'm very confident that well as this ecosystem um a growth and then we onboard a lot more developers to the FAM ecosystem. Um definitely the support for those um SDK solutions will be expanded. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's a good point. And, and partly the things have been just developing so fast and that's what we're hoping to be a lot better kind of going forward with this hackathon, especially with the new hyperspace work. Um, but even with that, you know, even up until yesterday, we're still kind of patching, uh, you know, issues, last minute things that have been found. And it's great that we've been able to iterate so fast. And it's great to have the early builders program who've, who've kind of stuck with us through all of this stuff. So it's great. And like you say, hopefully going forward, um, this should all be a, a lot easier for people. Um, Nanda, how was your experience? You've been, I think, a lot more on the, like the nuts and bolts of things when, when you've been building Lighthouse. How have you found the experience so far building on FEM? Yeah, I think the good part obviously is like it's EVM compatible, so we need not learn our new language. Like Solidity can be used here, and like the tools that we use on other systems like Harded, Remix, etc., they work here as well. And if people want to go into like smart contract auditing work, the tools that can be used to audit your code that can be used here as well. So I think that's pretty good part. Um, yeah, I think one bad part is like. Then test network getting reset. So we're almost like, okay. Uh, but now I think this hype for this test network, which is coming up, uh, is now more stable work, like the, more than the previous wannabe. Uh, but if, uh, overall, I think being EVM compatible, uh, most of the tools are already available in a way. Uh, but still, now we are now figuring out, okay, what core things we can do with the file.so library that's not possible on other EVM-based chains. So that is one of our focus in the team right now. Yeah, um, thanks Thanks so much for sharing that. And 
Uh, how about how about Ning, Ilya, Lemon also checking in? Like, um, I think all of you came from different areas. Like, I know uh, at different points in time in meeting the teams. Um, some of you have come from um, I think I've seen you at conferences, and then slowly we we started building together, and then some of you have come from hackathon. Um, what has your experience been? I can go and say for I me mean, for the most part my experience is uh and for other members of my team it's actually been relatively i don't want to use the term easy but um it's been relatively seamless there we go um yeah i mean for the most part uh in terms of uh resources you know that we that have been available to us um we've been able to you know pretty much go ahead and utilize those resources uh the F EVM is EVM compatible. So quite a few of us were, um, you know, already, uh, uh, solidity developers and for the most part, just kind of moving over. It wasn't, um, it wasn't that much of a problem for us. Yeah. Yeah. I think she yeah. was that we, we chose to be EVM compatible. I think that made a huge, huge difference. Um, sorry, Ilya, go ahead. Yeah. I think that's uh, just what you said, Sarah, that super important that you guys have chosen the like first launch F EVM. That's super important because the Solidity community is huge and our whole background also comes from Solidity. So, uh, as Karen said, like, yeah, st it's, it's going step by step. So some stuff is still missing, but we can see like the whole thing is moving quickly in the right direction. And, uh, we have also great support for, from the Filecoin team itself. So we have no troubles but of course we want more but yeah that's no trouble really <laughs> okay because i remember all of that conversation um yeah no no but i hear you on that yeah i think that was that's a uh that's an interesting um point there about kind of with the with the ethereum side i mean that was actually a change that was made originally it was going to be the native actors the rust and web assembly and all that lot that was going to be developed first and then there was a change to move towards doing the Ethereum virtual machine ahead of time um, as the first priority for exactly the reasons you mentioned, that people could move over, um, they could port stuff over. Um, you know, some people have mentioned, you know, yourself already, that you're already running like part of it on say Polygon or, you know, another EVM blockchain and then moving over um, as need be. Um, so that's been, uh, I think that's helped people get up to speed a lot faster, uh, which has been great. So uh, yeah, anyone else want to contribute about uh, yeah, how was? So, uh, actually, so to me, the experience is very good. It's also a plus one on the EVM, the EVM compatible. So at this point, we can just let our like smart contract install it, like, and use the, just uh, the the traditional Solidity like developing tools like hard hat. And the, the yeah, the the process is very smooth to me so far. Yeah, so waiting for the like the the minor API there, right? The actor, uh, SDK to be, to come out. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think one, um, important thing to know as well is that, you know, the FEM is meant to be VM agnostic. Um, it is uh, right now I'm building for Ethereum compatibility, but if we get it right and we do it in the right way, um, it's not meant to be specific to Ethereum only. Um, we also want to be able to open up to other VM. Um, but I mean, of course we love our Ethereum community and we'll keep supporting and maintaining that along the way. Um, but yeah, definitely more um, compatibility to come and more foreign runtimes to support. Okay, so we'll go into the last part of our panel. I think this portion is like, we have two questions here. Um, this piece is around like how you would advise all these other excited, super excited hackers. We have a huge amount of registration that the numbers are still going up uh, as of now. So um, a, a lot of people will be new, a lot of people, some, some people are experienced as well. Um, what is one really useful resource that you used in building FEVM or, or whether it was understanding FEM, FEVM or building it, what was one really useful resource? The cheat sheet is the best one. That's like the, the, this doc where everything is like, so the, use this one. I think it's yours, right? It's, it's your work, Sarah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I just compiled it yesterday, I think, but, but yeah. Oh, it's awesome. I, I just checked it out. It's amazing. Really. That's the one and only you need guys. Thank you. Um, but yeah, <laughs> anyone else aside from the cheat sheet? I, I would actually say that you guys are the, uh, the FEM team have actually been a spectacular resource for us. 
um, being a part of the early builders program, just interacting with you, not just on Slack, but you know, discord and, and even having some telegram groups. It's, it's been huge because for the most part, the team's very responsive and you know, it, it, it that really kind of helps us because as, as much there, there are, you know, doc, there is documentation out there, but unfortunately there's not that much. And so having a responsive dev team out there that we can go to on a number of different, um, a number of different, uh, uh, chats. It's really great. That means so much. Um, not just to me, but I'm sure to our whole team, uh, Matt has felt it. And we're just two of like 20 plus people that have, and, and partners that have been working on top and trying our best to respond to things. Like we understand things are building really quickly. It's not particularly an uh, easy piece to understand just off the cuff because it keeps changing daily and weekly. Um, so yes, thank you so much for saying that. Um, glad to know that it, it's helped. Yeah, yeah. it certainly me means a lot for, you know, like as Sarah said, there's a big team behind this, um, that has made this possible and the engineering team have just been moving so fast on building stuff. Um, you know, as, as, as DevRels, you know, Sarah, Zach and myself have, um, been trying to <laughs> keep, keep up and there's just new features coming the whole time, right? We've got to demo something and it's like, oh, there's something new cool that's coming in. I um, mean, you know, I remember when we, we turned up in Lisbon and literally like, you know, um, MetaMask integration happened like the day before we landed in Lisbon and we were demoing it. So, um, it's, it, it's, it's amazing. And the fact that the engineering team are there and accessible, we do all the work out in the open, right? Well, the majority of it, you can see on Slack. So. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's great. Uh, we have a great community that just, um, is open to try. So I would say also why I got out there, like, there's just me putting in my two cents or like advice is, um, you'll try things out. It might break. If you see a bug, like we're super responsive, um, put it in the discord, put it on the Slack, um, we'll get through it ASAP. So yeah, thank you for trying things out with us. Um, but yeah, sorry, Karen, you were about to say something. Oh, you're on mute, I think. Yeah. Um, now I was just going to make a suggestion for all the hackers. So, um, we talk about like in Meta Knight or briefly talk about the challenges of building, building on FA and, um, um, I think what challenges create opportunities for, for, for hackers, right? So if there's something that you see, it's not, uh, not available, not supported on FM yet, build it, build it and make it, make it available to the community and that would be highly valuable and appreciated. Code of 2023. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for instance, like, um, multi-sig, genosis, multi-sig is now, uh, available, uh, not supported, um, on, on FM yet. Yeah. So build, build one. Yeah. That would be great. And that, that's been great. We've seen so many of the community building tool around as well yeah. to help, you know, everything from the block explorers to little tools and bits of to, to like demos and readmes and some fantastic blog posts and Twitter threads. That have all come from the community you know and sometimes it's like the first time we see about them is when they get published it's like oh wow that's that that's awesome so it's great to see the community helping each other out and i've already seen in the discord um you know people from the community helping each other out with information about filecoin so that's um that's that's really cool. yeah um so i know we're almost at time i do want to do a quick exercise um just in case you know if you're watching it's been a lot of information to absorb we hope you watch back or you've enjoyed it uh what is one word that everyone can kind of take away from each of you um that you know for advice for doing great in this 30-day hackathon can i also i have one quick message can i also yeah. add something yeah Ned? i wanted everyone i just really want to use this opportunity because the second round of impact evaluator is coming so the corey is going to be talking about this after us and i wanted to ask everyone to vote for our project mark3d.xyz because like i mean it's so hard to promote it somehow and we have this voting system where we are voting for each other so yeah i'm just using this chance guys so please vote for us okay and, um, and may the fourth be yeah on the hackathon okay uh in in that spirit i will let everyone also just say their uh team project name one more time in case you want to also promote your team to be voted on um so yeah one word one word advice by hackers and then your team name just to close off yeah then my advice for the hackers would be on or you know just have fun and build something that you can show to people just not stay at the local host make it live and just have fun like build with other developers and and keep continuing what you build 
even after they hack it down as well. And use Lighthouse as GT. Don't miss that. Yeah, if I was uh, if I was to make a suggestion for everybody at the hackathon, I would say just think outside the box, be creative. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of other use cases, not just for the FVM, but, you know, blockchain technology as a whole. And you never know, your idea might be that one, uh, you know, you may end up straight, uh, hidden lightning. So right there, be creative. What? Uh, anything? Yeah. So my word would be, so one word to summarize the genius so would be engage. So I feel so. Um, though we we just working remotely, like I'm, like we uh, everywhere in the world, but I feel like a startup experience, like especially in this like channel, I could just stay tuned, and stay connected. Yeah. Very good. Aww. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Great. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. Um. Super appreciate all of you. Again, that was uh, Ning from Project Shell, Lamont from Jet Urban Finance, Ilya from Mark Beauty. Um, Nandit from Lighthouse and Karen from Spendow. Um, definitely check out all these projects. Um, they have built a substantial amount of progress so far and they'll keep building through this hack as well. Um, really quickly, I will share um, just one last resource that you can check out if you want to see, uh, you know, not just these teams, but what everybody else has been building. Um, whoops. Sorry. I just want to share, like, do I have it? Oh, no, I don't have it, but I will share it in the cheat sheet. Um, you will have a link that you can go look at all the other early builds and what they're building because we have a total of 116 projects as of today um, and more being added. Um, this cohort runs for every single milestone, so we will graduate this cohort at, mil at the mainnet launch in early March. And then for our next milestone, we're likely going to have another cohort. So if you want to have a similar experience to what all these people are building on, definitely look out for that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much to everybody on that panel. I know there's a lot of people there, uh, but thank you especially to Sarah and Matt for co-hosting that panel. Uh, and of course, all the early builders. Um, I mean, just to double click on, uh, I think the obvious from that panel, but a lot of the people who are on that panel were people who were in the shoes of the viewers who are joining the hackathon uh, that's kicking off today um, just a couple months ago. So I think uh, the Protocol Labs team in particular, if, if you didn't hear it from the builders already, um, I re really have turned it into an art form of being able to support builders um, and projects coming out of hackathons. Um, so really, really, really um, just wanted to stress that there's a lot of support, uh, both at the event over the next couple of weeks um, and beyond. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, using this opportunity to your best abilities and, and possibly you'll be on stage here um, at like HackFS later this year. So just wanted to double click on that. So thank you again uh, to all of our builders uh, and to Sarah and Matt from the team.